welcome everybody. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? Welcome, welcome to everybody here in church. Church is packed full of people and uh, at home I know that you're watching us as well. We miss you and we can't wait to have you back with us. Now, what you would have missed is that our sound system is not working very well today. And so we had to play, but thank you to Pat on her phone, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. And it is really faithful, actually, for us all to be back here today. So I do thank you for being here with us. So I think it's going to be more of a said Eucharist than listening to hymns today. But who cares? We're all here together, aren't we, as a family? Yeah. So thank you, Ralph. So let us just take a moment of silence as we come before God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness from all your sins time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the collect prayer for the third Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to listen to our first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, and you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not cover your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years. Will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Other than the crucifixion story, there are only two stories that appear in all four Gospels. The feeding of the 5,000 and the cleansing of the temple. So the fact that these stories are recorded in all four Gospels indicates just how important they must be. And it's the second of those, the story of Jesus cleansing the temple that we're thinking about this morning. Now, even though this story does appear in all four Gospels, there is an important difference that we need to note. You see, John, the evangelist, has something important to say, and he doesn't mind messing with the standard story in order to say it. 
We are all familiar with the story he tells in this week's gospel. But if we pay attention, we see that he doesn't just give his own distinctive spin, but actually is quite explicit with the details, with the symbolism, and even with the timing. So let's start with exactly that, the timing. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story, this story, the cleansing of the temple, comes during Holy Week, right at the end of Jesus' ministry, just after that triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And indeed, it, it plays a pivotal role as the last straw that drives his opponents to finally want to have Jesus killed. In John, however, the story is right near the beginning, coming immediately after the wedding at Cana and his first miracle of the water into wine. For John, the cleansing of the temple was a metaphor for the ministry of Jesus in its totality. So let's return to the story and see what we have to learn from it in our context today. Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Passover, as was the custom for all Jewish males to go at least once in their lifetime. So when Jesus arrives in the city, it's crammed with thousands of people, a really chaotic scene, but actually highly excitable and thrilling at the same time for everyone there. And of course, it was peak business time for all the religious artifact traders, selling lambs and pigeons for sacrifices and all the other bits and pieces that would be associated with temple worship. And in walks Jesus to the temple, into the midst of all the chaos and noise. He looks around him at the, at the pilgrims and the prayerful and the sellers and the touts, and his emotions rose to fever pitch. Now, it's at this point that we think that Jesus would have got so caught up in the heat of the moment that he lost it. But actually, according to John, Jesus made a whip of cords, which would suggest that he took time to reflect whilst making the whip. So, in reality, the actions of the temple cleansing weren't done in the heat of the moment. Jesus had had time to reflect and to think through what he was going to do. And it's then when the anger becomes evident. And again, John goes into lengthy description of what Jesus does. He drove out the sheep, drove out the cattle, scattered the money all over the floor, overturned the tables and, and threw out the dove sellers. No one escapes his anger. And then he shouts, how dare you turn my father's house into a market? The symbolism of all these details leads to a very different story with a distinct theological thrust. John puts this story up front because it reveals something crucial about who Jesus is. He is the Lamb of God, as John the Baptist had said in the first chapter, who takes away the sin of the world. There is therefore no further need for sacrifice, as Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. The temple had become a marketplace out of necessity. In order to buy the animals for sacrifice, the pilgrims needed to change their Roman coins for Jewish ones and then buy the animal for sacrifice. But with Jesus on the scene, the one who embodies abundance, there is no need for changing money or purchasing animals for sacrifice at all. In fact, never again. And indeed, it may be that John is trying to tell them that they actually don't need a temple at all. Why? Because Jesus' body, his physical incarnation, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his gift of the Holy Spirit 
was sufficient and is sufficient to mediate God's grace and mercy. Jesus is the one who introduces us to the parental heart of God. The one who makes the unknowable God knowable and approachable as much then as he does still today. Celtic spirituality talks about thin places. Those places where it feels like the distance between our limited and material world and God's eternal and spiritual realm collapses and it becomes thin. Those places might be the likes of, of mountaintops or other beautiful settings. I have appreciated that phrase and applied it to places where significant insight or development has occurred. For example, it happened for me at the graveside burial of unborn twins at which I officiated. But when I read John's testimony, it occurs to me that every place has the potential to be a thin place because God's presence in Jesus is set loose in the world and no longer confined to the temple, or of the church for that matter, available for everyone, wherever you are. Which in times of COVID, it's good news as, as we have been unable to gather in church for months. But then you might ask, why then return to church building on Sunday if we're saying that God is available and present anywhere? Why come back? Well, simply because this good news is so hard to remember amid the hassles, amid the challenges, the heartaches and tragedies of our everyday life. One glance at the headlines threatens our belief that God is present, let alone cares. One hour of listening to another's pain questions the promise that God is with us. And so we come to church not because it's the best or the only place to meet with God, but because at church we can detect God's presence and promise most clearly and easily. In the beauty of the hymns, and the words of the sermon, and in the bread and wine of the sacraments, we hear clearly that bold proclamation and promise that God is with us and for us. And that experience equips us and encourages us to look for God's presence and activity in the world, in that multitude of potential thin places life will carry us this week. And so, my brothers and sisters, our call is not to draw people to church because this is the place where they will see God, but rather invite them to church because having experienced the presence of God here for one hour, they might leave more capable of detecting God's presence in the rest of their week, where they might discover those thin places in their lives where God's presence spreads through our world with that promise of eternal grace, compassion, and courage. Amen. So let us stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Please sit or kneel. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We thank you that for the first time for so many weeks we can come together to worship and to give thanks for our deliverance from COVID-19. We thank you that so many of us have been spared from catching this deadly virus and pray for the comfort of all those who have not been so fortunate and especially for the souls of the millions who have died throughout the world. We thank you and pray for all the doctors, nurses and hospital staff who have sacrificed their own safety for the greater good and all those who have died in so doing. We rejoice that the dedication of the scientists who have produced the necessary vaccines to fight this deadly disease have been so successful in producing effective vaccines in such a relatively short time. And we pray that the generosity of AstraZeneca in producing their vaccine at cost price may be reflected by other producers throughout the world so as to, en to enable poorer countries to benefit from the protection that we may be tempted to take for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world and especially for our benefice. We thank you for the ministry of Sally, our rector, to the elderly, the sick, the dying, and the housebound throughout this pandemic, and for the ministries of Alison, our associate priest, and Jane, our assistant priest. Strengthen Stephen and Alan, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen in this time of disquiet within the royal family, and we pray for the continued recovery of the Duke of Edinburgh. As this and all the countries of the world try to beat the COVID pandemic and recover economically from the crisis caused by it, we pray, Lord, that you will give wisdom to all in authority in our government 
as it endeavours to budget our way back to peace and prosperity whilst seeking the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As children return to their schools tomorrow, we thank you for the joy they bring us and their eagerness to learn. Forgive us our impatience at answering their questions whilst trying to homeschool them during the lockdown and help us to learn from them with their unending energy and innocence. Grant that our schools, Lord, may, through their teachers, help our children to obtain knowledge, to keep it, share it, and use it in wisdom and in love, for the good of all and in the praise of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son Jesus Christ experienced the pattern of family life, and so we ask that our families may live together in love, respect and forgiveness. In these times of difficulty, strengthen us. In times of perplexity, bring us wisdom. And in times of happiness, make us thankful. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those on our sick list who are or may be suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Give them courage in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember all those who have died in faith, remembering especially David Iberson, who died yesterday in the Florence Nightingale Hospice, and Margaret Shepherd whose funeral is this coming Friday. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Be with Anne and her son Michael and daughter Claire as they mourn David's loss, and with Margaret's daughters Lisa and Fiona, sons-in-law Michael and Jason, and Margaret's grandchildren Libby and Geoffrey, and her great-granddaughter Esme. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Michael and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand for the peace? What a novelty to stand, eh? Hey? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another the peace in our unique ways. Peace, peace. <laughs> peace. Please do be seated, thank you.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. The Lord is here. Is lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into that radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his commands, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, 
So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My mic just started working, didn't it? I've been throwing my voice all the way through. Here we go. Okay, so we haven't got a closing hymn, um, and you don't want my um, karaoke session, so, um, yeah, let's just go straight to notices. Okay, so Hillary wins the prize today of finding the mistake in the pugin. Kate, it still goes on, even, even after all these years. You and I would double check, triple check, and what have you, wouldn't we? And it still goes on. But I think we do it on purpose, just to make sure you're all reading it and awake. I think that's it. So, yes, yeah, so it's the Easter details, uh, talking of uh, uh, Holy Monday. Of course, Holy Monday is March the 29th. But um, just to say, yes, we are going to be, um, uh, you know, celebrating Easter. We are going to, we've scaled it back a little bit. Um, so um, as you can see, we will be doing the Stations of the Cross here with um, uh, Pat's magnificent, sketch, magnificent sketches. Um, we'll have to do it in a different way. Uh, all will be revealed. Let's keep you on your toes so you don't know for the moment. But yes, so <laughs> services have been scaled back, but we are still celebrating. But before that, we've got Mothering Sunday. And thanks to Marion, um, it's still going ahead with the flowers. What we will have to do is, of course, you have to, uh, we're going to suggest that they help themselves, aren't we, Marion? As they come in, uh, Marion will prompt you to pick up a, a little bunch of flowers. Uh, thank you to Marion and to whoever is supplying those flowers and making them up and everything. Thank you. So we will be here for Mothering Sunday and Alison will be back with us as well. So that would be great to have the team slowly coming back together. Um, is there anything else that we need to share? Pat, Maggie, can you? No, I think we're okay. Um, just thank you once again for your patience as well. Um, you know, music hasn't played today, but uh, Roger and Sue are shielding because it, Sue's going to have an operation. And so uh, they're both um, isolating at home. So trust it to be the day that Roger's not here that our music can't, um, can't be heard. Thanks to Mags, you tried so hard. Thank you, Mags. Nobody else would even dare, so I think you're really brave, to be honest with you. But um, we'll try and get that sorted for next week so we won't be singing Great is Thy Faithfulness again. Um, <laughs> that's the only tune we know. <laughs> and if not, you see Pat saying that she'll download some proper hymns so that we can uh, sing behind our masks. Um, is there anything else that any, anybody else has to share? No? So shall we... Have the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.